It just looks so effortless from the outside to be me just because I never give up but on the inside I struggle to do every single thing and I just want to find some mostly some calm in my head like I just want my head to to relax sometimes and just do what it's doing instead of being everywhere at the same time it has now officially been a year since I first started taking ADHD medication and I really want to update you on all of the changes that have taken place in my life, all of the positive and some negative experiences that I've had, especially since you've been there since the very first two days when I started the medication. I still take Vyvanse or Elvanse, 50 milligrams, every single morning based on the recommendation from my psychiatrist and also what I've read in the medical literature. I thought initially that this would make me build a tolerance and I wouldn't feel the medication as much, but that's not the case. ADHD medication is seen as the first line of treatment for decades. Some people take it 10, 20 years. Even this specific medication has experiences from people who've been taking it 10 plus years. However, there is a change that happens over time. And if you think about drinking coffee, for example, you will be able to relate it, possibly. The first time you take coffee, you might have been jittery, you might have been all over the place, very energized. But with every time after that, the effects have become more gentle and more subtle. And the same goes for the medication. At first, you feel a lot of motivation and energy and focus and clarity. And eventually, they're there, but they're a lot more subtle. So just the same way that you can have a cup of coffee and watch TV, or you can have a cup of coffee and get some progress done on your work. You can take the medication and focus on playing games, or you can take the medication and use some strategies, use some tricks and hacks and whatever advice you received on YouTube or from books and use that focus for something that you actually want to do. This is probably the way that it works for most people, but not for everyone. Tolerance is very much a thing, whether it is partial or complete tolerance. And there is quality research that shows that anywhere from 2.7 to 24% of patients can develop a tolerance to their medication within 10 years. This is very much an important area of research that I think really needs to be elaborated on because it is a huge deal if these people can't get help. Now let's talk about what I see as some of my biggest progress points and hopefully that will illustrate what I mean by having that subtle but constant change and positive effect in your life. Now, even on my worst days, even when I haven't slept, when I'm stressed, when I'm PMSing, when somebody hurt me and I have to cry about it for three weeks because I can't forget it, I still get a few things done. I do my morning routine. I am on day 170 of my streak. This has never been heard of before for me. I never binge out the same way I did before. So I binge out, but it's never nearly as bad as it was in the past. And I get exercise. Since last May, I have been either walking or doing yoga, doing any form of exercise pretty much every single day. And I feel so much better and so much stronger from these three habits alone that I, I would say that I'm in the best shape of my life at 28 years old. I also get to do my evening routine a lot because I do my morning routine. I do my work more reliably because I take breaks. I don't only have to rely on that hyper-focus 10 hours burnout and then taking impossibly long time off while I'm really worried about when the work is actually going to get done. It's a lot more balanced. My communication has improved and for the last few months, I've even gotten slightly better at not ghosting people. I made a full guide with my tips and tricks in a recent video. You can watch it also in the description down below. After you finish this, I have finally been able to learn to be more mindful of around my phone. I will not pick it up at random times, especially if I'm with people. Maybe I will waste 10% the amount of time that I used to waste in the past. I have an old video on my other channel where I show all of the hacks that I'm using to lower my phone usage. And it's an endless list of rules and changes that you have to make to the point of having two different phones. None of this nothing has worked as well as the medication has. That is huge improvement for me. I really feel for all the people with ADHD out there who are 
following this neurotypical advice, who are reading all of this stuff, trying it out, noticing that it just doesn't work for them. And maybe they think they're a failure, they're not good enough, that they're not trying hard enough. But in reality, they have a struggle. They have ADHD. If it wasn't a struggle, there wouldn't be all of these books about it all these videos, all these research articles, people talking about it, the doctors talking about it, psychiatrists, the medication, because ADHD is a struggle to the point where I recently made a poll on my community tab and I asked you, how is work going with ADHD? How is your work life? Over 70% of you said that they either struggle massively or they have had to quit their job because of ADHD at some point in their life. And I have had to quit my job at some point in my life because of ADHD. And these people and you should not judge yourselves for how hard it can sometimes be, even with the medication. Even the creators of ADHD medications, so for example, Vivan on their website, don't cite 100% diminishment of ADHD symptoms. Actually, in their clinical study, they are citing a 43% reduction. So guess what? If I am normally 100% an ADHD mess, I will now only be 57% an ADHD mess. So now I want to end on a negative note. <laughs> Just kidding. But I do want to give you a few negative experiences with the medication so that you know that those are possible as well. I miscalculated my medication and I was left without medication for maybe three days. And those days I binged out like never before, like really badly. When I asked my doctor about it, she said, it's normal. Your brain is used to getting a certain amount of dopamine. That dopamine was suddenly missing. Had this break been more planned out, had I had anticipated it somehow, it probably wouldn't have been as bad, but it was. So that's a possibility. On a different trip I had in Greece, the medication suddenly started having the complete opposite effect of what it is supposed to be. I've never been so tired in my life, exhausted in my bones. I tried to leave out the medication for a day or two, things got better. I took it again, things got worse. And this was months and months into taking it. I'm still not sure what happened there. It did go away after a few weeks, but it happened and it was awful. Some people mentioned certain batches not working as well as others. I only believe that because literally I had the same serial number for my medication batch as the person in the post and many other people. So I thought might be something to that. And they also said sometimes if you leave the medication in a wet place, it will clump up and somehow act differently and feels bad and then your body overreacts. I tried to break it up, open a capsule, break it up, eat it with something. I think it helped, but I am not entirely sure. Both of these things my doctor said she has heard, but she is also not sure. And for the worst story of all, randomly, I started being impossibly angry about 12 hours after taking the medication. I was mad. I was so angry and I had no idea why. The reasonings that at the moment seemed to make sense to me made absolutely no sense after the medication had completely worn off and it did go away maybe two or three weeks in. I'm still not sure exactly what happened. Now, if you want to expand your knowledge about possible symptoms, some that really need to be talked about are in this video that I recently made. They're really important and I honestly think it's a shame that we don't discuss them more often. Even down to things like constipation can be caused by ADHD. It is a struggle. Hey, but it has been better. It has been better. A lot better.